Ahlan wa sahlan, my friends. Welcome to my kitchen and sahtain. Today I'd really just like to show you what I am making for dinner. This is something I make very often as a midweek meal, although what is a midweek meal, but what is a week? What is a day? Who, kn who knows? Who knows? This is a really tasty, basic thing that I make all the time that I think you will also really, really enjoy. One of my very favorite indulgence foods is mac and cheese. What do I love about mac and cheese? It's savory, it's creamy, it's got baby food texture, and it's just really comforting and warm. Mac and cheese feels really good to eat, but doesn't really feel very good to digest for me. Some time ago, I thought to myself, let me create something that satisfies all my cravings of mac and cheese, but is really healthy and nourishing. And thus, I have created my green mac and cheese. And before you come for me, I know it is neither mac nor cheese, but it is so tasty and honestly feels indulgent to me, and I really enjoy it. Hold up, pause. I just wanna share something very exciting that I am doing in a couple of weeks with you before we get to this recipe. My friend Shayna of Leaves With You and I are going to be holding a workshop as part of her new six-part series, The Art of Grief Rituals. This series that Shayna is running is exploring all of the different ways that we can alchemize our grief and really work with it in a compassionate and heart-opening way. I am so honored to be the first guest teacher for this series. We will be cooking a recipe together that is very grounding and physically healing to the body, but we're also going to be incorporating some really deep intention setting with our food and going a little bit into the energetics of the food that we eat and how we can use food as a tool to open our hearts and to move emotions through our body. This is something really profound that I have been learning about and I'm really excited to teach with you as well. So number 15th, 4 to 6 p.m. I will leave the link down there if you want to check it out on Shana's website. I would love to see you there and if you feel called to please look into the rest of the workshops that she will be running as a part of this series. All of the teachers are amazing and it's going to be a deeply transformative and beautiful experience and I'm very proud to be part of it. So it's been a minute and I'm very excited to be sharing recipes with you again. So thank you for joining and let's get back to the recipe. I really love using farro. Farro is one of my favorite grains. Farro has a lot of protein and fiber. It has some magnesium, it's got zinc. It's very, very, very good for you. And it's a great alternative for rice in a lot of instances. You can use it and cook it just like rice. When you get farro, just follow the directions on the packaging, but generally it's about two and a half cups of water for every one cup of farro that you make. You bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about 30 minutes uncovered and you've got farro. I like to add a little bit of black pepper, a little salt, maybe some turmeric. Do it as you like. But once you make your farro, you end up with something that looks like this. It's a little chewier than rice and it's really delicious in fried rice types of dishes and stir fries. You can make a great risotto out of it. This is going to be my macaroni. You can make some farro fresh for this, of course, but for me, if I was making this randomly during the week, I would probably just have some farro on hand. I also found that leftover farro, like white rice, works better with this type of cooking when it's not just made. Another thing that I'm gonna put in this is some beautiful roasted broccoli. Normally I'll throw into this any type of green vegetable that I have pre-cooked. Today I really wanted broccoli. To make my fantastic, delectable roasted broccoli. Mmm, so good. I'll first cut off the tough stem of the broccoli, but definitely save that because you wanna either blanch it or use it in a stock. That's a great thing to keep. And I'll just break it off into small pieces and any florets that are a little bit bigger, I will cut in half and then cut a little slit down the middle just to increase their surface area and make them all have a similar thickness so that they cook around the same time. I'll spread them out on a pan, put a little grapeseed oil, a little bit of salt, and toss them around. And I also like to add a little bit of red chili flakes because I like that. Throw them in an oven at 400 degrees for maybe 20, 30 minutes. About halfway through, you wanna flip them over so that the brown side is exposed to up it's you want to you want to flip them over so that every side gets crispy and once you've done that you end up with this beautiful extremely tasty broccoli snack that i can't get enough of so i'm going to be throwing this in with that today but use whatever roasted vegetables or greens you have 
There's really no one way to make this. Things I'm going to be putting in here. Some collard greens. Another thing I love to do at the beginning of the week is blanch whatever pretty greens I find and then keep them in the week and just throw greens into anything I'm making. It's really easy to blanch greens. All you have to do is separate the leaves from the stems and then put them in a hot pot of boiling salty water. The greens might take 15, 20 minutes to cook depending on how thick they are. The stems are gonna take a little bit longer. So that's why we wanna separate them so that you can pull one out before the other. If you're not sure if they're done or not, just check them and see if you like the texture. Then you can just kind of drain it and roll it into a little ball and then you've just got greens. I just wanna chop this up into really fine small pieces for my farro mac and cheese. I love to throw lots of greens into things and kind of put hidden greens in things and make sure I always get a lot of greens every day. I'm also going to crush a couple cloves of garlic to just throw in there. And that's all the prep that we really have to do. Cut it into slightly smaller pieces. And just throw it in a pestle and mortar with a little bit of salt, olive oil. Eat garlic every day, folks. It's so good for your immune system. Nice. So now we can just uh, throw this all together real quick. Let's go to the cooking station. The first thing we wanna do is get our pan hot. Uh, I am using a cast iron pan, and this is all gonna come together very quickly because everything is pretty much pre-cooked. Just gonna put in my farro that I'm gonna eat. It's fine, we'll save that for another day. And start to get that heated up. You can use more farro or less farro. I mean, I, you, can, you can do whatever you like. Once it starts making that noise, you can go ahead and add in your cooked greens. So I'm gonna add my collards now. I cook like this a lot um, during the week and I love having things pre-prepared, like single ingredients, so that I can throw something like this together in 20 minutes or less. Okay. Love my greens, so I'm also gonna add some fresh spinach to cook down in here. Basically just gonna disappear anyway, so why not? I don't need any oil because I'm using cast iron, but if you are not, you might want to add a little bit of cooking oil to this first. Then I'm gonna add in my broccoli and I'm just gonna add little pieces that are about the same size to throw in here. Broccoli time, it is broccoli time, oh yeah. If you see parts beginning to stick a little bit at the bottom, just put some water in there and it'll be glazed. At this point, to really drill in that I'm trying to make mac and cheese, I'll add a little splash of oat milk, which will cook off as well. So it's just gonna make it a little bit creamy-ish. Then it's garlic time. The secret thing, and what really makes it kind of mac and cheesy to me, is a little bit of pesto. I always love pesto in my mac and cheese anyway. This really brings it all together, plus it's a more green, you know? You can make pesto homemade. I love making pesto homemade, but right now, I, I don't have the, the tools. <laughs> and I'm gonna use the pesto I have. This also contains a little bit of cheese, so for y'all purists out there, uh, cheese. Hello, I would like to just pop on and acknowledge the fact that now that I have added a pesto that contains cheese to my mac and cheese, it is no longer vegan. However, it can be vegan when you make it. Just use a pesto that doesn't have cheese in it or make your own fresh and omit any cheese. For me, I eat cheese and this very small amount of dairy is fine for me. Otherwise, this is an entirely plant-based meal. So that is why I have put plant-based in the title. Thank you very much. Also, additional side note, if you want to add some grated cheese into this in a reasonable small amount so we're not going overboard it's still healthy do it uh, you can absolutely do that I do that sometimes as well um, really don't need very much to go a long way especially if you get like a sharp cheddar okay this is when it starts really smelling amazing I know this is kind of strange but trust me it's so good I've made this for friends before and they too think it is a very comforting and cozy bowl. That's it, basically. You can also add some nutritional yeast to this, which makes it extra like cheesy. Maybe I'll do a little bit, just like, that's fine. I don't need more than that. It does go a very long way though. It makes everything very umami and cheesy. Hello. 
Hello. This is heavy. Mm. You need to lift more weights. Okay, here we go. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, I am hungry and this smells good. A drizzle, some olive oil, of course. It's not mac and cheese. It's really good. It's a treat. Let me see. Mm. Oh, that's so good. It's so comforting and yummy. And you're getting like three different types of greens. One of my favorite go-to meals that I will throw together from things I just have around the house. Let me know if this inspires you to make your own version of a green mac and cheese of sorts. I'm super interested in ways that we can make foods that are really, really luscious and luxurious and indulgent into foods that are actually good for our bodies as well. For me, this is a great alternative because it really satisfies me in the uh, same way that a super cheesy mac and cheese would. Tell me your thoughts. I'm sure there will be many thoughts on this one. Um, thank you always for watching and for coming and being part of this space with me. It means a lot and I really enjoy sharing this with you. Comment and let me know if there are any ingredients that you want to learn more about or any foods that you really want to do something more creative with. I'm gonna go eat my dinner. Alf sahtain, as always. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you next time. <laughs>